Um, so I um, wanted to welcome everybody to our 2023. We're kicking off the year with a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, we are going to make sure that people have upward mobility opportunities in our Riverside County so that we can alleviate poverty and if we dare end poverty. So um, I'm going to kick us off with the roll call and then we'll go through our agenda. Um, so before I do that, actually, we have to do the resolution approval for um, authorizing the teleconference meeting. So I'm going to do a roll call so that you can vote if we are able to meet online today. And then after that, we will jump into our agenda. So I will start with uh, Commissioner Flickinger. Okay, we are going to go to District 3, um, Commissioner Jones. Okay, uh, Commissioner Playford. Present. Commissioner Wallace. Here. Hi, uh, Commissioner Cervantes. Present. Commissioner Altamirano. Commissioner Lisa Sobek. Commissioner Gardner. Here. Commissioner Lilienthal. Here. Commissioner Kane. I'm present. Commissioner Rodriguez. Present. Commissioner Carstairs. I'm present. Commissioner Gallegos. Commissioner Smith. And we do have some alternates uh, for the low income uh, folks. We have uh, Commissioner Castillon. Here. Okay, would you please act in, I, I did not hear um, Commissioner Jones come in. So would you please act on her behalf today? Sure. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Gale. Uh, we actually got a notice from Commissioner Gale that she will be in the uh, in the meeting, but she is not able to unmute and um, not able to share her screen. So uh, we'll just um, we'll just keep her keep her listening. Um, Patty, do we have? Um, oh, I just I just saw Commissioner Jones come in. So um, Commissioner Jones, we just want to make sure that you are here and that we can hear you. Okay, she disappeared. So as she comes in and out, uh, Commissioner Castillon, uh, we will we will play it by ear. All righty. All right. Thank you so much. So we're going to jump into the. Oh, okay. Here she is. Let's see if we can hold her now. <laughs> Welcome, Commit. Welcome, Commissioner Jones. We just want to make sure that you are able to unmute and vote that you are and to um, roll call. Yes, I'm sorry. I've been having a bad connection, but I'm here. Not a problem. Uh, your uh, your alternate um, and teammate, uh, Commissioner Castillon, was re ready to go, but we're glad that you're here. <laughs> okay, great. I'm here. All right. Let's dive into the agenda. Um, today, we are going to uh, do the approval of the agenda. We will have the public comment. Uh, we will have our guest speaker, Steph Nelson. I uh, will provide my director's report. We will go through the consent agenda. We have some commission tasks that we would like to share with you. Um, a few announcements and then we will adjourn. We will try to do this uh, you know, in a timely manner. But before we do that, I would like to go into public comment. Um, Patty, did we receive any public comment? There were no public comments received for this meeting tonight. Okay, would anybody want to um, see anything in the public comment? Okay, so um, I got a question. I got a question. <laughs> Sorry about that. The public comments, is it something that's not on the agenda? We can speak, but not on the agenda, right? The public comment is for the, for the yes, for the public to come in and, and uh, say, um, you know, address the commission, and it does not have to be on the agenda, but it's usually for okay. the public. Would you like to address us, Commissioner Wallace? Yes, Chair? I would. As a, I, I can do like be a the public person. So my dean is, um, we used to have uh, 
community actually come and help pay the utilities for our citizens down here. So we have a lot of citizens and they asked me to ask, will that community action, action ever come back to help with uh, applications so they can get their bills paid? So I'm, I'm speaking as a public constituent right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Chair Wallace. So uh, just to answer your question, we are present in uh, several spaces in this what we are now calling our satellite offices. This is an effort that started about two years ago and has been expanding. We now have uh, representation in uh, cities such as Indio, uh, Desert Hot Springs, uh, Hemet. So we are trying to expand our services. Um, we, we are happy to um, figure out who in the community would be a great partner where we can bring application. Um, and we are always open to hearing where the need is and uh, meeting people where they're at. So please, um, anybody that has, a, um, that has a request for us to bring our utility assistance clinics, uh, I'll put you in touch with our manager in the energy department and we will take it from there. Any other public comments? Okay, we are going to move on to um, my report. So I wanted to introduce you to Omar Becerra. We now have a community services division manager. And I uh, also wanted to update you before I, uh, I give him a chance to just address you, uh, is that we, um, one of our one of our supervisors, administrative services supervisor, Tamara Martin, has actually taken a position outside of this organization with another nonprofit. And uh, at the moment, we have Olga Sanchez serving as an interim. So we will be um, recruiting for those two positions uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks. And we also have an accounting position open. So there's a lot of staffing, uh, great stuff happening at CAP, and we are growing our team just a little, um, but we're hoping to. Get, get to know you more as uh, we recruit these um, new staff members. So Omar, would you please introduce yourself um, and unmute your, there you go. Absolutely. Thank you, Carla. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, like Carla said, uh, my name is Omar Becerra. I've recently been appointed as division manager for Community Action Partnership Riverside. A uh, little bit about me. Uh, I've had the privilege and honor to, to serve at different levels of government, federal, state, now county. And uh, it's just an honor to be able to get back into the community to serve, and that's what we do. Uh, I'm retired Air Force, uh, 22 years enlisted. I've had more than 26, uh, yeah, 27 years in human resources, business services, workforce development, uh, outreach, plenty of outreach. And uh, I'm passionate about helping uh, people. That's why I'm here. I'm committed to my core values, integrity first, obviously, you know, service to others and, and excellence in everything that we do. So I'm happy to join the team. I'm happy to be here and make a change, make a positive influence on, on the younger generation coming behind us so that we can do the right thing always. Uh, happy to be here with you guys today. We're really excited to have your talent and passion fueling our mission. So welcome to the team, Omar. And you will get to uh, know Omar more as we do strategic planning and we meet um, in our different orientations. He will be coming along. Um, all right, so that next, I just wanted to remind everybody that we're having a little bit of board orientation um, issues and trying to book you. Our idea is that we are going to come to your district. Uh, we're going to bring together the four representatives of your district. You get to know each other um, as a team. And then we also get to introduce you to CAP and all of the different components of CAP so that you can be uh, well prepared to serve. Uh, Patty Sanchez has been in touch with you. So please, if you have uh, staff that's helping you with your scheduling, or if you could please just, you know, Keep, keep an eye out for her emails and respond back. When can we meet as a team in your district? We would love to come out there as soon as possible. Uh, we also are putting together a program over the next couple of years on um, uh, board con connectivity support. And this is really to help low-income families and residents uh, serve on boards and commissions around the county. So we are going to pilot this program uh, where we are going to give people who are low-income and who want to serve uh, the opportunity to have access to a computer, uh, a laptop, and a hotspot, um, along with maybe a phone. We don't know what our funding looks like, but this would be uh, the basis with which we would start supporting our own 
uh, board members. And in the future, as this pilot, you know, yields results, we can grow the, the, the program into giving other low-income um, residents the opportunity to serve on boards by providing the support and, you know, connecting to the boards around the, the county so that they know that this program is available and that they encourage low-income residents to participate in, the, in other boards and commissions that may not be tripartite, but would really benefit from having the low-income voice. Um, I would like to show you the quarterly report um, next. And um, this is this is something that you can look at. Uh, if you go to our website, you can find it. Let's see. So if you go to Community Action um, of Riverside County, so it's CAP Riverside, and you click on Commission, and you click on your agenda, you'll be able to see this report in the January 19 agenda, and you'll click on your CAP quarterly reports. So this is always available to you so that you can be proud of all the, the work that you are part of um, on, a, on a quarterly basis. And then we will bring you the, uh, for the strategic plan, we will have the final year. What we're showing you here is uh, the first quarter report of July through September 30th. And um, this is these are the results that we have. So for this quarter, we helped a, a total of 148 tax returns. Remember, we're still having gotten into the tax season. So it's, this is great because a lot of people are coming back to um, either uh, get amendments or just deal with some of the issues that they're having with the return. So we, we are a year round program. Um, we have two volunteers into active, active sites at the moment. The cool and warm centers that are in your, in your districts, uh, we had over the, the, the course of the last three months, uh, about 3,294 visitors at 49 uh, warm centers. And these are um, residents who raised their hand and opened their doors so that people who are enduring harsh weather can take refuge uh, and can lower their, their bills um, if need so, if need be. On the dispute resolution, we continue to train residents on how to address issues moving forward. Um, the mediation classes uh, that we've taken that we've uh, imparted are 363, and we had 16 volunteers uh, doing all of these trainings. We've distributed 16 laptops and 22 desktops to low-income families to help them connect uh, and continue to bridge the digital divide. Um, and then we had one savings for success um, uh, program uh, eligible resident who worked on housing, and, I'm sorry, on home ownership. And we were able to match this, um, this family with $4,000 for down payment assistance. So we, we are, we're always really excited when we see people build their assets. Um, we got 33, $31,000 extra in additional CSBG discretionary funding. And we are using that money to help us with the strategic plan consulting, as well as our community needs assessment. Um, on the utility assistance and weatherization side, uh, we are at $5 million invested into the community. We all know that we have an extremely high volume uh, and we had a really bad backlog over the, the last uh, six months. Uh, thanks to Wayne Harris and his team with Monica Santana, we were able to get the backlog uh, addressed uh, over these last few months. And now we are back to being able to respond to people within two weeks of their application. Um, the LIHEAP, which is the energy assistance program, totaled a 3.5 million um, in, in assistance to 4,116 households. Uh, $333,000 of that was gas. 2,000 propane and $3 million went to electric. Um, and we know that gas prices are going up. So this, this agency is very proud to be able to assist families during this difficult time. On the LIWAP, which is the new uh, water assistance program, uh, we've put out a million dollars, a 1.2. Oh, just a second. Um, Patty. I'm sorry, but Heidi Marshall is having trouble getting into the meeting. Would you please help her troubleshoot? I would really appreciate it. She's uh, showing, um, waiting for others to join. And I, I believe she might be in the Teams instead of the Zoom. Um, on the weatherization side, we were able to put out into the community $436,000. Um, and that helped 62 households. 16 of these were mobile homes. Um, 
46 were stucco homes, 12 were renters, and 50 were owners. Uh, anytime that we weatherize someone's home, we are helping them have a safer um, and a, a healthier environment. And uh, these renters and these homeowners really are unable to bring that health and that, and that safety into their homes if it wasn't for our assistance. Um, so we are really proud of, of that work as well. So that is the end of that, of that report, that quarterly report. You will get to hear more about it at the next uh, meeting and we will be doing the annual so that you can see the amount of money that we are able to leverage with our, with our funding. We're next gonna move into the consent agenda and um, you all received the, this agenda in your commission packet. So I, I'm going to go through the, through the roster and I'm going to take roll. Um, so if you could please vote on the consent agenda, I'm going to start with um, commissioner and I'm going to skip the ones that I remember were not here. So commissioner Jones. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble unmuting, but um, aye. Thank you. Commissioner Playford? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. Commissioner Cervantes? Yes. Commissioner Gardner? Yes. Commissioner Lilienthal? Yes. Commissioner Kane? Yes. Commissioner Rodriguez? Yes. Commissioner Carstairs? Yes. And that that is our roster. Okay, so it seems like the motion moves. Pardon, that... Pardon me for interrupting. I didn't hear a motion and a second, just the roll call. You're right. Can we do a, a motion for the consent agenda, please? A motion. Uh, and I'll make a second. A second. Call it. Um, <laughs> okay. Motion, Clarissa Cervantes. Thank you for clarifying that. I've got a motion from Commissioner Cervantes and a second from Commissioner Wallace. Thank you. Thank you for the consent agenda uh, approval. Okay, we're moving into commission tasks. I wanted to give you an update. The low income sector election update is that we have now Ana Calvillo now pending for her board of supervisors appointment. It should happen uh, in the beginning of the month. So uh, Ana, I believe that you are here. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, because we don't get to see you until strategic planning uh, at the next level. My name is Anna Calvillo. I am a current employee at Corona Norco United Way. So I do work with Alia. I'm a business development officer there as well as a youth board director. I also attend the University of California, Irvine, where I'm studying business administration. And I'm really excited to be here and represent the low income sector for District 2. Congratulations on being elected and welcome to the, to the board. And we look forward to your participation uh, officially once you are appointed next month. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to remind you that our next meeting is a strategic plan meeting and we are meeting in person. We decided to meet in India so that it's a, a central location to all of us here in the county. And uh, we are looking for, we do have one site secured but it does not have um, AV capability. So we're looking for another location. We will, we will let you know um, ahead of time where that new location is. On the commission orientations, again, I just want to remind you that we're struggling to find uh, time that works for all the teams, uh, the five teams. So if you could please just be more commu communicate more with Patty and be able to work with her uh, would, would really help us. We really want to have all of these orientations ready uh, and under, you know, taken care of before we meet for our April uh, 20th meeting. So we have February and March to organize these orientations and to get together. Um, more, to, more of that via email through Patty. The executive committee has been formed. We, we voted last uh, at our last meeting and um, Chair Wallace and Vice Chair uh, Rodriguez, as well as I believe Secretary Lilienthal and our two representatives, um, Mr. Playford and uh, Commissioner Playford and Commissioner Jones representing the low income representatives and the ex officio. They will start meeting on, in February on the third Thursday of every quarter, starting next, um, next month, next February, of course. And um, we look forward to debriefing with them. 
some of the um, tasks that, that will come to them. They'll be helping with the agenda and many other items, but we will do that orientation um, starting in February. And then for our strategic plan, I just wanted to tell you uh, that we do have uh, Mark Burnt, who is um, the, the lead of this project on the line, and he's going to update us on how we are doing with that survey. Thank you, Carla. Yes, first we have done this, this just a background. We've done some key staff interviews uh, with program managers and above just to get a feel for uh, what has been, what might be uh, some things to improve on, and just even their, their, get a feel from them on uh, change and what they think about change at this point in time, because we're looking at some changes in the future, but uh, in the strategic planning process, we're trying to gauge uh, how either resistant or on the other end, how uh, open and even excited about change uh, staff are. So as well, um, with the uh, process, we just uh, are completing, by the end of this month, we'll complete the staff survey that's open to all the staff, getting input from all of them. Everything on the survey from uh, SWOT analysis, our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, to uh, different opinions and different uh, takes on community action partnership as it is and what can be improved. And I think uh, it will really be uh, excellent information once we uh, synthesize and then summarize and analyze uh, all of the input from the staff. We're also in this environmental staff that we're doing, we're going to get more uh, surveys done from especially uh, nonprofit partners and other service providers so that we can get a, an external feel for what community action has been to them, what they see us as, and what they would like to see us do uh, or what meet, needs they would like to see us meet in the future. And then with the, uh, uh, as Carla mentioned, it's in the agenda as well, in April, we in that strategic planning meeting, that's gonna be very interactive. That's where your input will be taking the information we've already gained plus some data that we have some data uh, consultants working on gathering from the county. And uh, we'll put all that together and have a process where you can give input and help us to uh, define some action goals for the strategic plan and uh, strategies to implement them. And then we're doing as part of the needs assessment that is uh, running in conjunction with the, the uh, strategic plan, uh, we're going to be doing a survey for the community. And this is countywide. And it isn't just low income people because uh, in all uh, validity, it'll be the fact that, well, people know of people who are poor and they know what they're struggling for, but we can filter out responses just from low income people, as well as we can gather as much information as we can on the different needs in the county, the priority needs, as well as the resources and what's being used to meet those needs now, what are the gaps, and so that's that's something we really would appreciate your help with, because when that survey rolls out, we'll send it to each one of you, but you can with your organizations, with your customers, your constituents, you can help us get that survey out a whole lot broader than we could just do ourselves. So uh, anyway, that's my part of the presentation, but I just really encourage you, this is a great way for you to help us. Uh, in this process, because this would be a very key and pivotal year for us with the strategic plan, as well as uh, what we gather in the data from the community, as well as uh, uh, yourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And if the board didn't, the commission didn't hear, we really need you at the strategic plan. Please make make uh, space for us, um, special space for us, April 20th, please make sure that you are available to travel to India and to have interaction with the rest of the commission, provide that input, be part of the next five years of CAP and really truly represent our community. Every district needs to have its representation and it has to have its voice and you are a great conduit um, for that for us. 
So uh, we hope to see you there April 20th. Next, I have um, Steph Nelson with the um, County Council. She is going to guide us on how are we going to meet in the future? We're, we're no longer going to be able to um, meet in person. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, am I back? I froze for a little while. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, oh, it's okay. I, it's it's you're muted, Carla. I have no idea what's happening, but it booted me out and brought me back in. So, Steph, I'm just gonna pass it on to you. I was trying to share my screen so that people would see your name, but I think you could just take it from here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Let me share my screen. Okay, it's sharing, right? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So, what existed before? was something called the traditional teleconference rules. It wasn't very popular. This existed before COVID. It wasn't an option that people usually took. Um, it had many of the same rules that we use now for our remote meetings. So such as like votes need to be by roll call. Um, a quorum of the legislative body has to participate in the jurisdiction that it represents. So you have to be somewhere in Riverside County. Um, you know, you post the agenda. The thing that people didn't use this was because you had to post the address of the locations of which you were teleconferencing in. So if you were at your house, you had to post your home address. This is why uh, this was not a very favorable thing before COVID. So after COVID, um, Governor Newsom had AB 361, which is what we're using today. Um, that was because of the state of an emergency and that required you know, vote by roll call for all motions. Um, but as of October 17th, um, it is announced by Governor Newsom that he is likely going to lift the state of emergency in the state of California at the end of February on the 28th, which would get rid of our um, AB 361. He's putting forward a new AB, which is AB 2449. Um, so that means we cannot have fully remote meetings anymore. Um, now you can either comply with traditional teleconferencing, which was the slide I showed you before, which is not very favorable, or 2449. Um, so 2449 is going to add uh, options for you as members of the commission to either have a just cause or emergency circumstances. Those are the two instances you can use to be able to be remote at a meeting. Um, so in order for you to be able to utilize either of those circumstances, um, at least a quorum of the members of CAP need to be at a physical location within the boundaries of Riverside County. So typically I believe we have 14 members. So if all 14 members are going to be present, we need at least eight to be physically in the location, either in Indio or in downtown Riverside. Um, and you need to be able to qualify under the just cause or the emergency circumstances. Um, so just cause has four different uh, scenarios that you can utilize. So childcare or caregiving need of a child, parent, grandparent, grandchild, sibling, spouse, or domestic partner, um, contagious illness. So it, that prevents you from attending in person. Um, you have a need related to a physical or mental disability um, as defined in the California Fair Employment and Housing Act. And you are traveling while on business, either for business of the commission or for business of a municipality that you represent. For just cause, you have to notify the commission the earliest time that you realize that you are going to have to be remote to the meeting. And the latest you can do that is the start of the actual meeting itself. Um, and then you'll need to provide a general description of the circumstances. You don't need to go into detail. Um, and then after you claim, okay, I'm going to be using my just cause, the meeting 
will carry on and you can uh, join the meeting remote. Um, you can only do just cause uh, two per calendar year. That's the maximum allowed. And then emergency circumstances, um, it's a little easier. It's just if a member of your uh, family or yourself is having a physical or other type of medical emergency. So this is just, your, this is your medical emergency one um, that would prevent you from attending in person. In order for you to make an emergency circumstances request, um, you would need to, at the start of the meeting, provide a general description of the circumstances. Again, you don't need to go too far into details. You don't need to violate HIPAA. Um, and But for emergency circumstances, when you announce that at the start of a meeting, um, the board will need to do a roll call vote in order to allow you to be remote for emergency circumstances. That is not needed for just cause. Um, for emergency circumstances, um, you can't have more than three consecutive months or 20% of the regular meetings, but because uh, this commission meets quarterly and we meet less than 12 per calendar year, you cannot have more uh, than two meetings per calendar year. So since we'll be meeting four times a year, essentially you can only be remote two times and that's it, either for just cause or emergency circumstances because we don't meet as often as other commissions. Um, so when you are remote, as part of your, you know, at the beginning of the meeting and you either say, oh, I'm going to be fully remote because of just cause or because of emergency circumstances, you need to disclose whether there are any other people in the room with you that are 18 years or older and the general nature of your relationship with that person. Um, I don't know why Newsom requires that. Um, and then you need to also be participating with audio and visual. That is very important for the Brown Act. So you can't have your cameras off and you can't have the audio off. You need to be participating as if you were in here in person. We need to be able to see you and hear you at all times. I mean, you can turn your mic off when people are talking, that's fine. Um, let's see. Oh, and then for the public, it is very important that the public has access to all meetings. That is the whole point of the Brown Act. So. Because we have our agenda posted, we will have physical locations um, available, which will have, um, which will allow members of the public to come and do public comment if they want. Um, when you have someone who's participating remote, you need to also have a virtual option for the public to be able to participate, um, either Zoom or telephonic. The board does a really good job of this, uh, the Board of Supervisors of the county. Um, they, at every single meeting, always have an option for the public to either come in person and fill out the name cards or to sign up online and join the Zoom or the telephone and then they unmute them. Um, since we don't know if someone's going to be remote, I mean, it can be up until the meeting starts, so there might not be advance notice. I think it is a good practice to just always offer the virtual option for the public. Um, okay, so if there is a disruption of the broadcast of the person being remote, if their internet fails, if they drop, um, no action can happen at that time period. Uh, you can uh, just kind of sit in silence and hope that person comes back because any action that is taken when that person loses connection, it could be rendered null and void. And then um, for public comments, this is this is the case right now. Um, there is no requirement for a member of the public to sign up in advance. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they just join the Zoom meeting and they want to speak on a topic. So we must always allow their opportunity to address the commission at any time. Um, the board does this where they have a section dedicated to public comment, but then for items that they're going to be voting on, um, they'll also ask, you know, is anyone here? And that is the update. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can go ahead and email either me or my colleague, Sarah Moore, who is a Brown Act guru. Uh, Carla has both of our contact information. Um, yeah, so thank you.
Thank you very much, Steph, to, for keeping us honest, for helping us navigate the complexities of going from hybrid to in-person. But pretty much what I'm hearing from you is that we need to start planning to meet in person and make Zoom availability really just for emergencies or for special circumstances uh, and for the public to be able to participate uh, remotely. So uh, to our commission, we are going to have to work after April 20th to figure out where uh, which locations are um, you know, the best for us to meet in person. And I think it's great that we um, changed our bylaws to be quarterly because this will make it much easier on us to have to travel to see each other quarterly rather than monthly. So um, we will we'll keep you posted on that. We'll talk about it more during the April 20th meeting. Um, Steph, a quick question. If we were to um, set up the meetings where we have uh, eight, eight of our representatives here in Riverside, let's say, and another four in Indio, uh, do we all have to be in the same physical location or do we just have to be physically present with some type of quorum? Um, you can have multiple locations, but the they need to be accessible by the public. They need to have the agendas posted at that location. So, I mean, if you wanted to have two or three locations, as long as the agenda is posted on it and the public can come in and absorb and um, comment if necessary, then that is fine. Okay. So it sounds like we're going to also have our little hybrid, you know, brainstorming session. All right. Thanks so much for your for your support, Steph, once again. Thank you. All right, so now I'm going into announcements and um, the, it's three quick announcements. Uh, the first one is our National CAP Leadership and Management Conference is coming up in February 8 through 10. So there are uh, two of us attending, Omar Becerra and myself, uh, will be attending that, um, that conference and bringing back some really good information for our staff on how to continue to build our uh, professional development and also our team. Um, after that, um, oh, the dates are a little bit jumbled up, but um, after that, we have the Community Action uh, Foundation. That's a Washington, D.C. national organization that helps us um, advocate for the type of work that we do, the funding that we get, um, and reporting to our elected representatives all of the great work that we do here. So I'll be attending uh, that, that event with Greg Rodriguez, our uh, government relations uh, deputy director, uh, in March. And then after that, uh, we have the Cal Kappa Legislative Day. This is our state network of community action partnerships. There are about 60 of us here in California. We all meet in Sacramento for a day of um, education and advocacy. Um, we are attending from April 17th through the, through the 18th. So we um, spend maybe about two days, full days there, uh, both attending prep and uh, state network um, meetings, as well as meeting with our elected officials in California, so our assembly members in our um, in our uh, state uh, senator. So we uh, are going to talk to the executive committee about who is available to attend with uh, with me, and um, also with uh, Greg Rodriguez, who will also be supporting our legislative efforts. So that is that for the announcements and for our meeting so if i could if you have any anything to add or any questions i would like to open it, open the floor up to the commission for any last minute thoughts okay so if i can have a motion to um actually i have to go back and do something don't tell anyone i hope it's not no one knows but i need a motion for our roll call and I also need a motion for our uh, resolution. I don't think that I asked for that. And Patty came in and told me that I, I missed that. So if I could have a motion for the roll call in it's a second. A, it's a motion for the resolution and a motion for the agenda, please. Okay. I'll make the motion for the agenda. I'll second, Maurice. Thank you. And uh, for the resolution to teleconference. I'll make the motion the teleconference. This is David Kane. I'll second Colleen Wallace. Thank you. And now if I could have a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'll I'm make a motion to adjourn. Oh, sorry. So oh, I do have, before we adjourn, can I say something? Please go ahead, uh, Chair Wallace. 
Okay, so I, I just received, oh my God, they just sent me this. So someone sent to um, the community center in Banning that, uh, let me find it, that someone was scheduled, that's a schedule for the 26th for someone to come out and help art because we're in desperate need for people to help banning um, for community, community service community action to help us. And so uh, uh, Ralph, which is the director of the Parks and Recs just sent me this saying that someone told them to make an appointment and that they were that community action was supposed to be here today to um, help with utility assistance. And they've been, whoever this, uh, our constituents has said they've been calling and said they're going to be coming down. We'll be here on the second and the fourth Thursdays of the month to help with um, utilities. So I maybe I'll call me Carla offline and and, and we'll talk about it. I definitely. So I going on. Yes, we'll figure this out. Um, it, it's not like cap not to show up to to utility assistance. I know. We'll get to exactly. the bottom of it. No okay. problem. Thank you. Uh, and then staff, you had something to add. Oh, I just wanted to say, make sure to um, to broadcast the next meeting date and time and location if you have it. Absolutely. So let me uh, share my screen again. And the next, so I am showcasing here. We are meeting Thursday, April 20th, uh, 2023. I'm gonna change, you didn't see that. And that is going to be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the India location that we will send out uh, for you later on. And I think now we had a motion to adjourn and now we need a second. A second. Okay, that was Commissioner Lilithal. And I'm going to go through the roll call. Okay, so I will start with Commissioner Jones. Aye. Commissioner Playford? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. yes. Commissioner Cervantes? Yes. Commissioner Garner? Yes. Commissioner Lilithal? Yes. Commissioner Kane? Yes. Commissioner Rodriguez? Carla, did you hear me? Oh, that was Commissioner Rodriguez, aye. Thank you. Commissioner Carstairs? Aye. Commissioner, that's it. I think we, we are done with our roll call. Thank you very much for being here again. Uh, we are really uh, thankful for your service, for your commitment to ending poverty in Riverside County. Um, if I wasn't, um, you know, if I didn't say it enough, Please make time for April 20th, and we will see you then in person uh, sometime uh, in, that, in that space in India. So have a wonderful rest of your evening.